Hello, everybody here at the Pokemon Speedrunning TV Marathon. We are coming at you now with the Pokemon TCG Speedrun. And for the first time ever, we are doing a three-way race between all three of the starter decks. I will let our runners introduce themselves and let you know which runner or what deck they're running with. I guess I'll start then. Um, I'm Ragentreg. I've uh, done this run once before on uh, a different marathon, but I'll be running Charmanta today. So uh, the old school route uh, for the most part, which has been replaced uh, for the fastest things, but people still run it and it's still fun and I love it. Alright. Uh, hi, I'm Pinecone606. Um, I have been... I've done this... I was in the PSR Marathon last year running the Bulbasaur deck, but for today I'll be running the uh, Squirtle and Friends deck, which is almost certainly the slowest of the three options, but has some uh, interesting options, interesting, uh, interesting choices to be made and some, some cool route uh, choices um, coming from it, so we'll see how it stacks up. Okay, and uh, my name is Toronite. I run, uh, I'm going to be running Bulbasaur and Friends deck, which, as you know, Rag and Drag mentioned, Charmander being the old school method. Bulbasaur is kind of slowly becoming the new school method thanks to a lot of uh, early game friendly cards that you get. And it'll be my first race against two very experienced runners, but uh, uh, we're all here to have fun and uh, it's going to be a great time. A great time it will be. And I don't actually know if I said who I am, but I'm Autumn Out of Habit. I have run this game a few times, not nearly as fast as these three, but I can say a lot of words. Well, that's so good. We will be settling in here quickly and getting all of our runners ready to go. And unless anyone has anything else to say, I'll go ahead and count us in. I'm good to go. I'm all ready. ready. All right, we'll go on go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so our runners are going to be starting off here. We'll see Pinecone is immediately going to the PC. We have email that has a booster pack of cards attached to it. And then our runners are going to do our first deck edit of the run. What we're going to do is take out a few Pokemon, add a few energy, and if you talk to this person in the right side of the lab, if you don't have enough energy, they will give you a bunch of free energy. The next thing that our runners will do is then make a second deck with one basic Pokemon and the rest energy cards. That way we can get another set of free energy. Then dismantle it and the beginning of the run is going to be very similar on all screens up through this point where we see Pinecone right now. We will go in here, talk to our rival Ronald, who will be coming up throughout the run and then going up to talk to Mitch, the leader of the fighting gym. Um, Mitch has a deal where he sent his three pupils off to be in other clubs in the game. We call our gyms clubs. So we have to find and defeat them before we can go up against him. So we proc that. Then our Ragentreg with the Charmander route is going to be going right into the Grass Club. So in the Pokemon TCG, and this is based on the uh, first base set, jungle, and fossil expansions. We have a concept of weakness, which makes us do double damage to opponents, and Pokemon will also have resistances that knock it down by 30, so we take that into account when routing. The uh, Pokemon, or the Bulbasaur and Squirtle decks are very similar. Uh, Bulbasaur has a few more options that make it strictly better. Uh, but the main star of the show is going to be Hitmonchan in the beginning. That is something Charmander does not start with, so that's going to be the most divergent route here as we see using Diglett, which ground Pokemon are fighting Pokemon in this game, so we've got Diglett doing double damage against a lot of these colorless type Pokemon. Uh, so 
basically what we're going to do here, rather than try to set up a deck that will be able to win against everything easily, we're going to go for trying to run, in the most cases, one, maybe two basic Pokemon. There will be a little bit of a difference in the Charmander route on that. But basically then we just shuffle until we get a basic Pokemon in our hand, that way we guarantee that we get the one we want. Uh, we're also looking at how many Pokemon the opponent has on their bench. And generally if they have more than zero or one, we're going to try to reset. This is a very reset heavy run. Uh, Pinecone is making her way into the Electric Club. Uh, and a few of the early battles that we are prioritizing here are trainers named Jess, Heather, Michael, Brandon, Nicholas, and Sarah. So every time we win a battle, we get two booster packs. There are four different types of booster packs. The only one we care about are Coliseum packs. Uh, you'll see on Rog's screen, he had just picked up an Evolution pack. All of our best cards are going to be in Coliseum Pack. There also is a little bit of a bias toward the type that is in the club that we're in. Uh, but things we're going to be looking for. We want good trainer cards. We're hoping to get some Professor Oak uh, for card draw. Bill for card draw just gives us a free two cards. Uh, Computer Search is great to pick up. We're looking for Doug Trio, which will come up in the end game. Uh, we're also looking for Scyther and Double Colorless Energies. Our runners are, in fact, using, just to make sure this is more viewable, are using a, a slight overlay to make this game flash a little bit less. One cool thing about the Pokemon TCG for the Game Boy Color is that there is no wait time on your inputs. So anytime the game is accepting input, there's no buffer, no frame delay. If you can mash at 60 hertz, then you can progress at 60 hertz through a lot of this. So we'll see a lot of runners who will do an alternative mashing on A and B. Other mechanics of note, we have a continue duel feature where if we don't like what happens on our turn or our opponent's turn, we reset, click continue duel because this was a handheld game that lets you go right back into it. It takes you back to basically whatever the result of the last decision you made was. So you can have the opponent knock you out on their turn, and just reset back to your last turn and try to find ways around it. We also use that for some RNG manipulations. And Important just, um, note about the RNG, which is probably worth mentioning now, um, is that while you're in a duel, the RNG is effectively frozen. The RNG only actually progresses while you're in the overworld, or I believe in the start menu screen, um, which means we can modify coin flips as we may see along the run. Absolutely. So RNG only advances, as Rock said, when it is called. So uh, going through here, we saw that Rog had gone. When you go into the grass club, you have to defeat the three trainers there. Then they'll tell you where their leader is. She's over at a guy named Ishi Ishihara's house. So we go there, talk to her. She goes back to the club and we go back. Uh, we will pop into certain clubs at times and pop out of them. Um, but we'll see a few different edits. As you see, uh, Pinecone and Tauronite both using Hitmonchan for their battles. Hitmonchan is a great Pokemon as it's a basic with 70 hit points. So nothing is going to take it out too quickly. It's fighting type, which a lot of early Pokemon do not resist. And for three energy, it can do 40 damage, which for anyone who knows newer TCG, uh, back in this era, our numbers were a lot lower. The highest HP totals in the game are only 120. And really, you don't see a ton above 70 or 80 hit points. So we do have eight different clubs uh, for different Pokemon types, such as fire, water, grass, electric, buy-in, Psychic, uh, Rock, which is also fighting, and then fighting. So, you know, all of the Pokemon types that exist. The Pokemon TCG, of course, consolidating things. Quick uh, note while I, while I have a, a thought. Um, the uh, You can really see in the early game the big difference between the Squirtle deck and the Bulbasaur deck. Bulbasaur deck starts out with 2 plus power, which is a trainer card that boosts damage by 10. Uh, Squirtle starts with 0. 
Um, and that allows Bulbasaur to win a lot of two-turn fights in one turn and gets a really strong early advantage. Um, you've seen a lot of the fights I had in the Lightning Club just now that were two turns or three turns or four turns that could have been one turn. I was running the Bulbasaur deck. Absolutely. Plus power, probably the most important card in the game. Uh, just because we want to go fast, so being able to do more damage is going to do uh, get you through things quicker. And really, each the starter decks, the main things that we're worried about are how many Hitmonchans, Electabuzz, and Dugtrio we have, and then what types of trainers we have. So Bulbasaur gets two plus powers, a Defender, and a Gust of Wind. Uh, Charmander gets two bills, a Computer Search, which lets you discard two cards to find anything in your deck, and one plus power. And Squirtle just gets an, a scoop up and an item finder, which can have some uses, but uh, Squirtle is definitely lagging behind here. I suppose to make up for being fastest as far as the three starters in Gen 1 Pokemon. The other thing of note in the Squirtle deck, and this is big for the end of the game, is that it loses a Doug Trio, which would otherwise be in the deck. And Doug Trio is going to be our main for the uh, the end game. Like, I just got one now. Let's go. Um, but for now, it's uh, it's a big loss for the late game, the uh, lack of Dugtria. So that's right. something you're going to manage. Yep, and I have not pulled one in a booster pack yet, so we will see. That said, I did get a, a card that no run other than Squirtle ever uses. I got a Pokemon Breeder. Um, which will help for uh, a certain gimmicky strategy that will be... I'll tell you more about later. You actually got one. Yes. I did, yeah. <laughs> I was I, part of trio. <laughs> I actually got two the trios off of Michael, so two the trios in the same battle. Oh, that is fantastic, getting two Doug trios. Doug trio generally is what we use against the... Uh, Grand Masters in this game, our version of the Elite Four, because Doug Trio can just uh, throw out 70 damage, and even things that resist it will take 40, so... 30. Uh, very oh, wait, quick no, it's 40, to... sorry. I'm yeah, very quick to just steamroll through the Grand Masters. Uh, usually you start with one. If you're me, you usually get to the dome with one, because RNG hates me. TCG pretty much just a casino with extra steps. Uh, but ideally, we are hoping to see three or four Doug Trios by the time we get to the dome. But all of our runners do have some contingency plans, as well as a little surprise that we've got in store when we get to the dome, as we are running the three different routes. And Toronite up against Isaac, one of the club leaders in the game, the Electric Club. Uh, arguably the easiest and one thing i we needed to say about the club masters is they cheat they are guaranteed within the first uh five cards i believe it is to have four basic pokemon uh, so in pokemon tcg you win either by KOing all of your opponent's active pokemon or by drawing a set number of prizes in this game between two and six uh, we see Tornite getting through that battle, getting the first of the eight Master Medals, because we can't just call them badges. But that means the Gym Leaders are... We especially want to try to go up against them quickly, because otherwise those fights can take a long time. We want to need to take as few prizes as possible. Toro now going up against Chris, who is one of the Fighting Club members that we have to track down in order to send them packing. All right, I got and... a trio. <laughs> yes, let's go. Ooh, phew. Literally most hype moment of Squirtle runs. <laughs> it would have been a very, very messy endgame if I did not pull a trio. Yeah, and it's very blinker you miss it when you get the packs at the end of the fight. And one of those things where once you start running it, you realize that you can see it quickly because you're only really looking at the top couple cards in the deck. Oh, Crystal is... Or Pinecone is up against an Eevee here, so that is just going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. That's what we want to see. A uh, coin flip means that she won't be able to attack this turn. We're just hoping to not see another basic come out. Sorry for or the curse well. there. As a second Eevee going onto the bench. And we don't really have a way to get around that here. 
Uh, Rog is up in the electric club here, as we see Doug Trio on screen, is going to resist the electric attacks and be able to just um, murder oh. all of these electric types here. Oh, and just of note, one funky thing I did earlier, you, s you may have noticed for the eagle-eyed that I used computer search, but then reset. Now, there's a funny thing about search cards, is it shows you the top of your deck in order. I saw a fighting energy which I needed, and then Doug Trail after. So I reset the game while in that menu to then draw that specific fighting energy and Doug Trail to make myself go faster. Fun little things like that is uh, what makes the game so great to run. Absolutely. Also, one of the cool things in this game, because you're working with different cards every time, is that each run is going to feel a little bit different. It's not very scripted, and in fact, there are regular arguments about what even is the best route to go through. Uh, Pinecone, who is the second on our leaderboard, I'm pretty sure is doing a slightly different route every time I've watched her play the game. That is true. I do make a lot of uh, changes. It's a... Uh, there's different factors to weigh, because... Uh, it, if you're optimizing for something like a race where you only get one attempt, you're going to want your lower risk, uh, higher reward battles first. But if you're optimizing for attempts that you reset over and over again, you may want to get your least, your most luck dependent battles out of the way first. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways to tackle the game's battles. Um, and I, there's no consensus on the best one yet. Yeah, at least for the glitchless category, which is what we're running today. There is also just a plain any percent that just uses a fun glitch where you just cause the game to get confused and exit the duel and it counts you as winning without even playing. So uh, with that, we can finish the game in, I want to say, like three minutes and some change. I could be um, mistaken on so that. So there's two, um, there's two more uh, glitchy categories. There is the duel escape one. And with Dual Escape, you're quite right. It, you basically just skip the fight um, due to... What you effectively do is you try to crash the game, but the game gets confused and then spits you out of the duel with a win because reasons. Now, there is an ace in this game, and I forget which um, system, uh, what you need to do for it, but that's there is an ace version of the game, and that includes the uh, somewhat lengthy tutorial um, the famous eight minute tutorial uh, of the game and which is why we start where we start after having chosen the decks and whatnot um, so yeah there are a few glitches but not apart from that we've not found too many glitches in the game to be honest I mean it's pretty stable for an old uh, Game Boy game yeah, the game is very stable it has a lot of weird mechanics that don't make a lot of sense, but they were intended. It's like two executors at Neki. That's not happened very often, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, that... Wow, I... I can't remember the last time I've seen that. We're all getting course, great marathon luck so far, it seems like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, the Charmander deck likes going up against Nikki because most of her Pokémon are going to be weak to our Charmander. And unfortunately, with a race between these three categories, it's really hard to tell who's going to be ahead until we get to the point of going into the dome. Which, uh, you really hope to be getting to the dome around... It's amazing if you get there around the 36 minute mark. Anything below 40 and pretty good until you're getting up to the top levels. About a lot of variants. It looks like uh, Toro is in, I believe, the. Okay, yeah, going against the Rock Club leader, Jean, using a Nidorino deck. There's also a strat here that uses Scyther, which resists Jean's Pokemon, but you have to draw a Scyther to get that. And the goal with Nidorino is most of the Pokémon that Jean has are going to be weak to grass, which poison is grass in this game for reasons. 
And so once we get four energy on, we're just swinging for 50, which gets doubled to 100. And that's another club medal in the books. And we just saw Rug went up against the first Ronald battle. We're also about to see Toro going into that. That's our rival. And Ronald is slow. It's a six prize battle and you get nothing that you want for winning it. However, you don't need to win the battle. So it's faster to just lose. Ronald is also kind of bad. So what we do to mitigate that is we make a second deck that just has four Magnemites and a bunch of energy. And we hope that Ronald will KO us on turn two. If Ronald does not KO us on turn two, then Magnemite has a self-destruct attack that KOs itself, and we lose the battle. So we actually did uh, had got something really lucky with Ronald. So in the Pokemon TCG, you can have something called a Mysterious Fossil Trainer Card, which isn't actually a Pokemon, but you can have it act as a Pokemon. And so the lucky draft, if RNG is in your favor, is to draw the Mysterious Fossil turn one and have that be as your lead Pokemon. And you get a, in most cases, a one turn loss, which saves a lot of time because Ronald potentially has stuff like energy removal, which makes the the Magnemite strategy a little bit uh, more tedious. I didn't know you were actually able to get it to set up a Mysterious Fossil. Yeah, the uh, the tricky thing with Mysterious Fossil is the game will make you reshuffle your hand until you have a real Pokémon in it, but if you do happen to also have a Fossil in your hand, you can play just the Fossil, in, in, in the video game at least, as your lead Pokémon. Um, and then it's only got 10 HP, so that's pretty uh, straightforward. In theory, the only... you could probably do it in the real card game too, just that would be a really bad plan if you want to win the game. So the thing about Mysterious Fossil is um, it has one special little quirk, which we use sometimes because it's just useful, um, is that you can use a Pokemon power, which is a little bonus power that you get for uh, on some Pokemon, and you can discard it from the playing fields and then put something else in. This is super handy for certain situations, but unfortunately against specifically Ronald, you can't- if you only have Mysterious Fossil, you cannot use its ability. Which is really silly, but I guess necessary. Yeah, I suppose they didn't want to account for if you wanted to just intentionally lose the game. But we're speedrunners, so we're too stubborn. And now, uh, Rog is up against Amanda, going against Scyther, which is a Pokémon we hate to see on most routes, and actually sometimes the Bulbasaur route will add in a couple of Charmanders just for this fight, in order to get around Scyther having fighting resistance. Uh, looks like Rog not liking what he sees from this battle. Unfortunately, um, in that case, I had Magma, which would have KO'd Scyther, um, which would have KO'd Scyther, but unfortunately the Magma, um, uh, I didn't have the energy for it. I only had fighting energy and I couldn't give Magma the required two, um, two fire energy in order to attack, so I had to reset uh, with one prize remaining, which was very sad. And now I'm just, oh my days, this is possibly one of the most troll Amandas I've seen in a long time. Um, it's going to be difficult to top this one. Two Scythers, she's healed them one back to full. Yeah, love to see it. Oh my. If it makes I it any really better, I just got my first medal. <laughs> 30 minutes into the run. Let's go. <laughs> My uh, Amanda was maybe the strangest Amanda in a good way that I've ever seen. She started with three on the bench, and none of them were Scyther. It was all Poliwax and Jigglypuffs, and she ultimately ended up with as many as five Pokemon. Every single one of them were all Jigglypuffs and Poliwax. That's that's always good to see. The, the one downside with the um, Charmander route is, as you see, I've been using Fighting and Fire Pokemon. And Amanda is the has the amazing capability of beating both with either Poliwags against the Char our Charmanders or Scyther against our Diglets because Diglet can deal no damage to the Charmander. So yeah, we we have our we have our troubles in uh, 
in uh, the good old Charmander route. Yeah, and after we get through that battle, then the game finally remembers that the Water Club is water, so uh, we ideally try to switch to an Electabuzz deck. If we don't have Electabuzz, then runners will use a Pikachu and Raichu deck. And that's actually one of the benefits of the Bulbasaur route. Uh, Squirtle also gets an Electabuzz, whereas Charmander, which used to be considered the beginner route, does not. So that's the only time that you'll really ever see Raichu strats get pulled in. Because Electabuzz, also an excellent Pokemon with uh, 70 HP, and for 2 energy it can do 30, or if you get a good coin flip, 40. Uh, Pinecone is now in the Science Gym. Or, I'm sorry, Science Club. Going up against a lot of... Basically, science in this means status effects. So we're going up against a Grimer. We have Porygon, which can't attack, but it can change it. It can change our type, and it can change its resistance. This Tornite is, a, this also... is another example of a battle where um, I'm very much feeling the lack of plus power in the deck, because I think I have now lost four different turns where I was 10 HP away from a KO, and that's that's one of the critical weaknesses of Squirtle, unfortunately, but we just gotta press on. And yet, everyone in the community is always rooting for Squirtle, too. Like, we want to see more good results with a Squirtle deck. And just, unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily have the cards. So, uh, for this battle here, we either go with a Kadabra deck, or there's also a promotional Mewtwo that has the ability, if you can discard some energy cards, it has an attack for one Psychic that lets it pull up two Psychic energy out of the discard. A uh, Tornite in the Fire Club, which we make a Diglett and Doug Trio deck to go up against. We don't have weakness against a lot against everything, but he uses a lot of colorless Pokemon, which we can hit super effectively. As we see Tauros here, the downside of Diglett is it only has 30 HP. So there we see our Diglett is getting knocked out, and Toro was ready for that and added energy to the Diglett on the bench, and that way able to throw a Mud Slap, 2 energy to do 30 damage, doubled to 60. Chansey here is a wall with 120 HP, however, it needs 4 energy to attack. Pinecone coming up against the first Ronald fight. So we're going to see her hopefully get knocked out by Ronald. And we see that she attaches a water energy rather than a lightning because it needs 1 lightning and 1 colorless. Ronald is less likely to use an energy removal if you're using the off-type energy card. And so that's just a small optimization to try to avoid getting knocked back a turn. And then we can move on with the rest of our life. Meanwhile, Rock has, uh, using Electabuzz strats here, going to reset to continue duel. Uh, seeing a Cloyster, which I don't know that I've seen that one pop out too often. You it may not see it often, but uh, the one thing it can do, annoyingly, is paralyze. Like so many po uh, water Pokemon can, it can paralyze, because that's a thing, apparently. Electric Pokemon in this game love to paralyze, which means you can't attack or retreat. Uh, we do have a trainer card called Full Heal that we can hopefully draw into when that happens, or if you have a Pokemon that can evolve, when you evolve it, it clears any status conditions. Because that's just how the TCG works. Oh, nice double colorless out of the pack for a Tauranite, although I think you're past the point of needing it, but like to see it regardless. Only in that I'm having to use one, or rather, I only got one double colorless to for it to be of use, and it, I never in, ended up even, uh, even drawing it, so I'll take what and, I can get. Yeah. And now Toro is going up against the Psychic Club leader, Murray, who... We use a Diglett and Hitmonchan deck for this, or Rog will probably be using a Rattata deck. I'll be uh, using both Diglett and Rattata, yeah. Good when to know. And the reason why we need to have a Hitmonchan in this deck is for one card called Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime only has 40 HP, and it is an absolute troll. Because as a Pokemon power, if you would do more than 20 damage to it, you just don't do any damage to it. So Hitmonchan can swing for 20 damage for one fighting energy, 
Also, because it's weak to Psychic, Murray will try to send out Psychic Pokémon to attack it, even though they'll get KO'd. And then, uh, we would bring in Psychic, which tends to be the weakness of Psychics. However, Murray also uses a lot of colorless Pokémon that resist Psychic. And on that note, um, the colorless Pokémon, specifically Chansey and Kangaskhan, they turn up a lot in the game. I mean, and when I say a lot, I mean most of the Elite Four have it. Um, that, those are the only ones I can think of. But most of the Elite Four, at least three of the gym leaders. Um, yeah, which is almost a bit of a joke that means the fire... Did I...? Okay, then. Um, that... Uh, I always jokingly call the Fire Club the Colors Club because you're more likely to see Jigglypuffs and Chanseys than you are um, a Fire Pokemon. Nice. And we see Pinecone doing a slightly different route than what we normally see here. Uh, it's one that she said that she was going to do for this run, going against the Fighting Club leader Mitch early and using a Kadabra deck to try to get through uh, his fighting Pokemon. It's a little bit risky because Abra only has 30 HP and Mitch has a lot of Machops and Hitmonchans that can do 20 damage for one energy. If we can get to Kadabra, we're good. The trick is getting to Kadabra and getting the three energy needed in order to just start KOing everything. Should be fine here. And we have an energy removal, which lets us take an energy off of the opponent's Pokemon. So that is something that will help out. Uh, now we're going to see Rock go into the Rock Club to go up against Jean as well. Uh, taking a look at what Pokemon we've got, and looks like we're going with Pinsir Strats today. Yeah, we're going with Pinsir because I got three of them, and it's a good meme. Um... Um, I am all for a good meme. So Pinsir um, is a Pokemon that can also do some good damage, and you don't need to worry about evolving into it. Uh, oh, five double colorless in your deck. That is, you love to see it. A lot of times, especially if you're on PB pace, you'll get in here with one double colorless or zero because the game hates you. But, you know, we're... We're all Pokemon speedrunning fans here, so we all know just how much we love RNG. And Toro going up against, for anyone who plays the category uh, for high-level attempts here, we do we allow battle manipulations with a timer for regular trainers, but not for club leaders or the uh, Grandmasters. Brittany has the absolute most uh, basic Pokemon in the game. Out of a 60 card deck, 20 of her cards are basic Pokemon. So she, you want to get a one-on-one, -on -one, but that's only a 21% chance with her. Usually we're looking in the high 30s or low 40% for that. Uh, she can get a lot of Pokemon. She also has a bunch of Pokeballs that let her add more Pokemon to her bench. Uh, so there is a frame perfect Manip that Pinecone goes for a lot that if you get the right frame, you can take her out in one turn and not worry about it. But if not, this is a fight where you can lose a lot of time. A good fight will take 36 seconds, give or take. A bad fight and you could be at it for upwards of three minutes. It looks like this pincer is rolling, even got an extra energy on it, just in case of any removal, doing double damage against all of Jean's Pokemon. So, just nothing Jean can do. It looks like Pinecone just got her fifth badge, I think? Fourth. Fourth. I can count. Hey, just at the same time as mine. Nice. Hey! And the reason I'm looking for the fifth badge is after that we will get our second Ronald battle. Which, I remembered the hard way yesterday when I was doing a D-Rust run, and thought it was after the 6th battle. Oops. I have also just made a colossal mistake, and I've just reminded myself of why it's a colossal mistake. 
because what I've done is gone for Gene before I normally do. Now that sounds a bit weird, like why would that be bad? Um, so the reason is, um, the male which we saw earlier in the game, we have certain manipulations for it, and I was planning to do one later in the run, um, based on a standard route. However, because I've accidentally forgotten my route and gone the wrong way, I now have to deal with um, um, figuring out what the pack, which pack is where, <laughs> which might be interesting. Yeah, very easy to do here as well. I mean, while Pinecone is up using a Hitmonchan deck, um, I'm guessing you have Dugtrios in there as well, going against the Fire Club. Yep, I run both for uh, all three of the uh, Dug Trio battles, just because then I don't have to remember to edit for Murray, and sometimes Hitmonchan's pretty good against any of those battles. Yeah, and if anybody even remembers playing the TCG back in the base set one days, I mean, Haymaker was the the main deck for a reason, and it just focused on using high HP basics that could get up and running quickly, so a lot of Hitmonchan... Uh, Electabuzz, when Jungle came out, it was Scyther, and a lot of those Pokémon are really good here as well. And Ronald deciding to slow Pinecone down by using an attack that needs to flip a couple of coins. We like to avoid coin flips wherever possible. A lot of good attacks have them, but coin flips are slow, as they take a couple of seconds each time you need to use one. But Pinecone successfully losing against Ronald, too. And we're going to see, we see Toro has a Mysterious Fossil, which is a trainer card that acts as a basic Pokemon that has 10 HP and can evolve into the fossil Pokemon, which aren't basics. And a lot of times we'll put that out as just a way to stall for a turn while we get ready because the opponent does not get a prize card whenever they knock out the Mysterious Fossil. There are a lot of upsides to Mysterious Fossil as well that um, we haven't mentioned so far. The biggest one, um, as you may have seen me earlier against Gene, um, if you would, the uh, fossil would get paralyzed or in the case of Rhyhorn, declared that it cannot attack, um, Mysterious Fossil doesn't care about that. It just sits there, um, takes the status or the negative status, and then you can take you can swap it out and um, then have a free Pokemon in the back. In my case, Pinsir, to mess up their mess up their day. And Toronite showing off one of the benefits of the Bulbasaur deck having more plus power was able to get a plus power onto Kadabra to one-shot the Porygon that took Pinecone two shots, and drawing a second one out of the prize pool, so you love to see it, and Kadabra just absolutely ready to uh, tear through the battle with Rick. Meanwhile, it looks like Rog going up against uh, Ken, building out the Dugtrio deck. Dugtrio's Earthquake Attack, which is for fighting energy to do 70 damage, is commonly referred to as the Wind Button in the TCG community. And it's really nice to see Dugtrio getting a chance to shine that it didn't necessarily get in a lot of the mainline Pokemon games for being a little bit on the frail side. Okay, so we've got uh, Toro picking up a medal. We have Pinecone picking up medal number six. Only two more before she gets to go on to the dome. Toro Knight going to talk to Nikki to send her back to the grass club. That way he can go and beat her. Uh, Nikki is pretty easy as far as the club leaders go. Uh, things can go a little south with some issues as far as status effects. And looks like Toro is going for Ponyta and Charmander strats. Uh, Ponyta is really interesting, especially when you have a good complement of double colorless energy. 
because it has an attack for two colorless that does 20 damage, double against a lot of things in Nikki's deck, so sometimes you can get a very quick kill if she just has a couple of 40 HP basics out and you draw into your double colorless. Uh, but we're starting with Charmander. A little bit slower, but once we get a second energy onto it, we can start swinging for 30. Just have to discard an energy to use that. Uh, Pinecone, it looks like, is going against Jean. And she's showing off Scyther strats, which Scyther is going to resist most of what Jean can throw at us. For one grass, it uses Sword Stance that doubles its next attack's power. And then for three, it slashes for 30, which will double against a lot of things here. So we do a Sword Stance, and then uh, Pinecone does have a double colorless, which lets us turn to 120 damage on that Geodude. Not a chance of surviving that. We've got a Gloom on the screen on Tora Knight's side. Gloom is really annoying to go against as it'll throw all kinds of statuses and we get yet another Executor. Who knew today was the day of Executor? I certainly didn't know. I mean, I knew that there were Executors in that deck, but I also kind of forgot about it. Yeah, it's just one of those ones you forget about because a lot of the time it is not very good. I mean, objectively speaking, it it's only attack, if I remember right, uh, does 20 damage per coin flip heads you get, depending on how many um, energy you have. So if you have one energy, you coin flip, and if you get heads, you get the um, 20 damage. Usually you'll only ever have one thing on it, so it's not actually the scariest thing in the world, but it's annoying because it's out of reach of one-hitting. Um, with the exception of Magma, none of our cards can one-hit it. Oh, Charmeleon can, actually, on that note. But it's rare also, that you see uh, Charmeleon. We had a beautiful sync-up as Pinecone and Toro picking up their seventh medals at the same time. And now are both editing their decks. Toro has to go up against, I believe, Mitch. While Pinecone is going up against Nikki, built a Ponyta deck and has double colorless in hand, so we've got Oddish, a an executor or execute rather goes onto the bench. We'll see if Pinecone also sees an executor. Toro Knight building an Articuno deck. Uh, this is a pretty typical route to use against Mitch, and then we'll also use that against the first of the Grandmasters, which will be the Fire Grandmaster or Fire Elite form trainer if we think about this in terms of any other Pokemon game in the world. We still don't know why they went so far out of their way to differentiate the naming conventions when they just took Pokemon and slapped it into a video game for the TCG. So I had a, I had a very interesting turn here that's kind of hard to explain. So, uh... Uh, Execute evolved into Exeggutor and then would have killed me for 40 damage getting two heads. Um, so then I took a- I used Continue Duel before that registered and took a very, very different turn. Um, I was able to actually steal that heads, because as we know the RNG only advances, uh, when it's called. So I could steal that heads to use my own Pokeball to get the Ponyta Evolution Rapidash, um, which allowed me to cure a status move, and also use Defender to prevent some of Exeggutor's damage. Um, so then I ended up turning a battle that would have been a guaranteed loss into a much better situation. Yeah, and that... Basically going back in time to avoid things that we don't like and find ways out of them is great. Things that call the RNG are anytime there's a coin flip, anything that shuffles a deck, or some actions that happen on the opponent's turns. Uh, Tornite the first into the dome. Pinecone picking up metal number eight. Uh, so uh, definitely these two have a bit of a lead over Rog, which the downside to the Charmander route, which there's still arguments to be made for Charmander being the fastest, Charmander definitely has the highest variance because you're using a bunch of different Pokemon. So it, you have much more of a risk of if luck goes against you, luck goes against you, and this is a marathon, so luck is always going to go against the runners. And, and speaking Toro of luck, uh, speaking of luck, I don't even hate my luck this this run. The funny thing is, I have possibly one of the best decks I've had for a long time. In that I have four Doug Trio, I picked up a second computer search, which we mentioned as super important cards earlier. 
But unfortunately, the actual duels have not gone my way. All right, so I'm doing a bit of a gimmicky strat for Courtney here, although it also shows off a key difference in the starter decks. I'm actually going to use Squirtle um, for this. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One is because uh, War Turtle um, has an attack for 40 damage, which takes two colorless and one water energy, and that allows us on turn two to do 40 water damage, which can KO a lot of Courtney's weaker basics. So it's kind of a high risk, high reward play. And then also, uh, you know, just for funsies, we also have Blastoise in there which has the ability to do up to 60 damage a turn if you have enough energy cards, and the ability to attach as many energy as Blastoise wants. Um, so those two things together uh, create an interesting kind of alternate strat for this battle. Um, neither are... It's not necessarily optimal or the most reliable, but it is definitely the coolest. Yeah, and the Grandmasters here in the dome, they cheat... Uh, just like the gym leaders do, so they are guaranteed to get a bunch of basics, and you actually get kind of scared when you start a battle and you see nothing on the bench, because this game introduced promotional versions, the legendary versions of all three legendary birds, and the fourth legendary bird, Dragonite, and all of those have RNG-based effects whenever they come into play. Uh, Zapdos will do damage to a random target, Moltres, I believe, will pull fire energy into your hand, and Articuno will randomly paralyze someone. That's correct. And Dragonite, being a second stage, will just never come into play. And if Dragonite comes into play, it has strictly downgraded your opponent's side, so you actually like to see that one. And the dome is where good runs go to die a good time through the dome we love to see about an eight minute dome we often see closer to an 11 minute dome uh, yeah like uh Pankham was saying i think eight minutes is the record but i think usually i'll be happy with 10 minutes 10 minutes is what what would cons constitute a good dome This is what happens when I've watched a few too many of Pinecone's streams and internalize the numbers we're look uh, that she's looking for when she's gunning for record. Please, please. <laughs> also, the legendary birds in this game do not have weaknesses, so unfortunately, we're not going to get a an 80 damage bite from War Turtle, but we are showing off War Turtle strats, which definitely have seen in the community come up a number of times as something we want to make viable, and we've got Blastoise here. Blastoise has a cool Pokemon power that lets us attach as many water energy on the turn as we want. And Blastoise also has a mechanic where extra water energy over the three that it requires for Hydro Pump, uh, we can get it from 40 to 60 damage if we get up to five water energy on it. Uh, Rock using a promo Mewtwo that was added for this. The one that I had mentioned earlier that we try to discard some psychic energy so that it can use one energy to pull two more onto itself and then swing for 40. A lot of Rick's deck is going to be weak against psychic, using a full heal to get out of that status effect that the coughing put on us. Tauronite up against Steve and seeing Jolteon. That's not something you see come out all too often, but not a problem. Doug Trio is going to resist most everything here. Electabuzz would be a problem for any other Pokemon, but for Doug Trio, we do not care about that. So I'm I... going to be doing a bit of an interesting strat because obviously since I'm running the Bulbasaur deck, I we decided that at some point we're going to be doing Bulbasaur or our, our, our namesakes, I should I should be more specific, our namesake uh, Pokemon at some point during the dome, and Bulbasaur, I actually did not get a good haul of Ivysaurs and Venusaurs, but Bulbasaur going up against Jack is a very interesting, but actually somewhat viable strategy, because if you manage to get it all the way to Venusaur, or even just to Ivysaur, the combination of its attacks and the ability to inflict poison does do a lot of damage uh, against everyone. We do love also seeing 
new strats that might even be considered for something outside the context of this run that were figured out just so that we could make sure that Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle all get their chance to shine in the run. Because unfortunately the Bulbasaur route in this game, as much as we love Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur not isn't fast for the speed run, so we just use it for the other cards and Bulbasaur comes out of the deck immediately, normally. But this could see some change as we do have Poison Powder. Poison will, after every turn, do an extra 10 damage to the opponent, although there is a small cutscene that takes a few extra seconds. But we've got Ivysaur, and this is certainly something that I haven't seen anyone run in speedruns of this. Also, if anyone is interested in getting to learn this game, it did recently drop in the uh, Game Boy Nintendo Switch Online package. So this is actually accessible there, both for casual play or for speedrunning. Um, as long as you use the classic feel, we are able to in fact use that as it goes down to the native Game Boy refresh rate. Pinecone is on Steve. Steve is the Elite Four member who can go incredibly quickly if you get just the right hand and YOLO with a Hitmonchan, you can sometimes get a turn to win against Steve. It's very rare. Uh, Rock is going to the computer and you see now we have 12 emails with booster packs and are you doing any nips? Not this time. Basically because I got uh, really lucky um, with... Um, because I got really lucky with my Doug Trios, I actually, in fact, have six Doug Trios, which is basically unheard of. Um, the luck for that is off the charts stupid. Um, because I got that many, I just went for the packs directly, and I didn't manipulate. Um, just because it just wasn't worth the time loss. And especially considering I'm miles behind now, uh, <laughs> I need every little inch I can get. Yeah, there is a file out there that has a list of their algorithms for you open a pack and see what's in it and then you know what packs to open in what order to get Pokemon that you're looking for. Uh, world record attempts tend not to go for that now, just because it does take a lot of time and we basically just hope that we get enough RNG in the run. Well, that was not great. That was not great. So on Pinecone's screen, the legendary Zapdos is out, and it has an attack that it does 70 damage to a completely random target. So it can attack anything on Sieve's side, it can attack anything on our side, and annoyingly ignores resistance. Yeah, and I, I had uh, particularly, I had the what I thought was good luck of having three Pokemon on my bench, or two Pokemon on my bench and one active, but all three times Steve used Big Thunder, it hit one of my Pokemon. It hit none of Steve's Pokemon, which did not give me enough time to get the, uh, the, uh, trainer I needed. Good. Well, there. That... And, of course, Eevee saying that we can't attack this turn, so, uh, Pinecone is going to play a Mysterious Fossil to swap out, because if we bench our Pokémon and then unbench it, we will be able to attack. And now using Mudslap to take out the Eevee, and hopefully Steve doesn't play anything else on the bench. We're hoping now to get a plus power here, uh, using an energy removal just to take away its energy and if we can get a plus power, that'll take it out this turn. If not, it's going to be one more turn of hoping that there isn't another basic coming out, as we can only swing for 60. Meanwhile, Rock showing off the Articuno strats against uh, the against Courtney here, going up against a very good boy in Growlithe. Yeah, well, good boy, li little good boy Growlithe decided to evolve into RK9 for the first time I've seen in a very long time against Courtney, and wiped out my first attempt against her. Which, it's always fun, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is always fun. Arcanine can throw out some serious damage here. The downside of Articuno strats is that Articuno needs three energy to do any attack, but that three energy also lets it do uh, 
Am I mixing Paralyzed. that up with Dugong? No, yeah, so three Dugong, energy. Dugong needs four energy to do its 30 damage attack because logic. And um, Articuno is the reverse. Um, Dugong is technically faster, but you the reason that a lot of people default to Articuno over Dugong these days is because Dugong needs to evolve, whereas um, Articuno does not. And that's a big... Um, that's a big difference. As we see on live on stream, nine tails is eight tails. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> eight coin flips. This is the worst attack in the game and so I live going pretty well. Also, <laughs> Toro had a brief cameo of Venusaur, which has a cool Pokemon power that lets it shift grass energy around on your side of the field. Not super useful for a speed run, but kind of cool. So, this has happened often enough that I really should explain it, um, and also have to reset a Steve for a third time. Um, so the way the RNG for Legendary Zapdos works is it first uh, determines which side of the battlefield it's going to hit. And then, only after that does it determine which Pokemon. Um, that means, unfortunately, if it if you are stuck in an RNG seed and it decides it's hitting your side, it's you, you can't, there's nothing you can do there. Um... But the uh, the upside, do I have a scoop? I do have a scoop up. Okay, one second. Uh, but the upside is that uh, once you know it's hitting your side, you can play Pokemon onto your bench to try to get Zapdos to target those Pokemon instead, um, because it'll re-roll that second. You know that second uh, roll depends on how many Pokemon are on your bench. Uh, so that so that minor little trick can be used to save a bad situation if you're very desperate, like I have been the entire time I've been playing this run. Um, <laughs> and I've been trying to use that to draw out battles that seemed like they were going to work if not for Zapdos, and unfortunately uh, that strategy has not worked out super well for me as I'm on minute seven and a half against Steve or something like oh. that. Oh my days. Uh, <sighs> I would not say this is my, my, my greatest attempt ever average TCG runs be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. TCG no, and a I... TCG. Meanwhile, Toy Knight I... in the lead, just finishing off Rod's legendary dragon deck, the fourth legendary bird, Dragonite, which did not make an appearance, and Toy Knight with a pretty big lead coming against our final battle. We're going against Ronald for the third time. Unfortunately, this time, we can't lose. So the annoying part with Ronald is that, one, he has every copy of all the legendary birds twice. And he has Scoop Up, which is a card that allows, basically, uh, allows you to recover a Pokemon from it's either in your lead or in your bench, and then you can just play it again. So the strategy, at least for the AI for Ronald, is that you were to scoop up, say, a Diglett, or any of the legendary birds for that matter, and they use their Pokemon power. The weird thing about Ronald is that his deck building is the worst for a champion you could possibly ever ask for, because he has only fire energy, meaning Zapdos and Articuno can never attack, not even once. They can only use their, um, their, their Pokemon power, and that's about it. Uh... Yeah, well, but, Steve. <laughs> and he did play a Zapdos that hurt his own Pokemon, which oh no, wait, sped up a turn. Okay, I basically have. Please, please. This is, in terms of desperate situations, I'm just gonna let this play out. This is a hysterical mess of a situation, which I'm gonna have to reset with one prize remaining on Steve in the end of it. Um, oh no. Basically what happened is he actually got Big Zapdos um, to his three energy, and I was desperately digging through my deck um, for um, for a um, energy removal, just so I could get um, another turn or two to actually KO it. But I was not lucky, and here we go again, Steve! <laughs> yeah, Steve can be the fastest of the Grandmasters, but... We've also all lost a lot of room, a lot of our runs to Steve. 
Zeev did finally let Pinecone through, so now she is going up against Jack with the Articuno deck. And Articuno, no match for our Doug Trio, once we can find a Doug Trio. And it's really difficult to do decision making mm. as reset discipline is a very strong part of this run. You have to know when to get rid of certain hands. And a lot of times, especially if you've had bad RNG, you'll try to play some things that maybe you shouldn't on that. But generally with the Doug Trio deck, you want to at least have a route to get your Doug Trio, either like a Pokeball that you can try to hope for, Professor Oak to get cards, Gambler in a pinch, you just want to find a way to get Doug Trio and energy. And then, as we see on Toro Knight's side, just able to absolutely wreck using the Gust of Wind card that lets us pick something off the bench to come in, pulling in the Dratini to one-hit it. And now the Zapdos that can never attack is out. Uh, Toro is one prize card away from winning this, so unless something unprecedented happens here, it's looking like this is getting ready to be a GG. Uh, time will be after we pick up all of the legendary cards and the screen fades to white. However, uh, go ahead and get your GGs in chat as Toro Knight showing that Bulbasaur is best Bulbasaur. Best Bulbasaur. Is Shenanigans around? I think he needs some. Um, he needs to be around for this. I know Shen has a run coming up later today. I think Pokemon Blue. I saw. I saw the estimate and is seven time. hours and thirty minutes. So I'm really wondering what category that is. Oh, must we catch them all, right? Clearly Bulbasaur percent. But congrats, Toro. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. I, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I was actually really worried because. I only had one Ivysaur and one Venusaur, no Pokemon Trader, and one Pokeball, so the odds of me having to get a Bulbasaur out within reasonable time were actually already really low and it took, only took me a couple of resets to be able to get it. I would really like this Pokeball to flip heads once. That would be very cool. That is the true TCG experience there. And Toro finishing with a 5908, which would convert to a 10711, which solid time. I think that would beat my PB, at least. Also, we got an answer, so I'll just let the runners know that uh, the category for blue is catch em all glitchless. Also, anyone not looking in chat will now know. Nice. And. As has been pointed out, Shen putting himself through something. Oh my god. Oh. So Articuno, this attack never matters, so we didn't explain it, but Articuno has a weaker version of the Zapdos random attack, it just, but it does have the benefit that it, all, it does always attack your side. Um... So, but it does only does 40 damage, is the only silver lining. Uh, so that's why I tried to play that Mysterious Fossil, and I finally got heads! There we go! Yeah, the let's go. RNG-based attacks from the opponent is that they, uh... They advance the RNG, so you can change that tails I was stuck on for 100 years into a heads. Hey, finally getting a Doug Trio. We really don't want to use the Hitmonchan that Pinecone has out against legendary birds because they resist fighting, so Hitmonchan can swing for 10. And the legendary birds have uh, 100 HP each, so that would be a 10 shot. And 10 hits is in fact pretty slow, even ignoring the fact that you have to survive that long. Was that a super potion I just saw? Uh, yeah, Super Potion has been absolutely goaded in this run. I put it in my deck just because I didn't have any other trainers, and I've used it, I think, six times, and it saved, like, three battles. Super Potion is one of those cards that I will sometimes put one of in, because you really... The, the, good, the upside is 40 HP recovered is really good. However, the downside of losing an energy can often be very, very inconvenient. So... 
I like having it as a one of, maybe two of, if you've literally got no other potions um, from packs, but that's very rare. Yeah, I, I've also used Scoop Up, I think, about three times in this run. Really showing off that, that Squirtle, that trainer card that Squirtle gets, Scoop Up. One of the, the only two. Almost usually usually useless. Um, but I've gotten, I've had some very specific situations that have made them pay off for me. Yeah, and also we are seeing a good point about just how swingy the RNG can be in the dome, having the gauntlet of five fights in order, is that Rog was the last to get into the dome by a decent margin, but has now overtaken Pinecone and is on the final Ronald battle because Steve just decided Pinecone didn't get to play the game for a while. And but now, now I'm also, crossing my fingers. <laughs> yeah, and also up against Jack, and there's a channel in the Pokemon TCG speedrunning Discord that is just, I lost the game to, and a lot of the time it's Jack killed the run. It's usually I, Jack or Steve. I actually had a, uh, I was on pace one time for a, I think it was a 57 minute run. And it got killed because of a six-minute Ronald. You oh. hate to see it. You hate to see it. Alright, let's find that Charizard. You know you want to see that, though. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, with the Charizard, even though I got it, I'm getting it for the meme value. The problem with Charizard... Um, is it costs two energy to attack, and he requires four energy to attack. So, sorry, I have to discard two energy off him every time I attack. Did I? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, Charizard can swing for a lot of damage. I want to say it's one... Is it 100 or 120? It's flat 100. Flat it 100 wants... for four fire energy, and you have to discard two of them. Correct. Um, I think it's two of any any energy. I'm drawing on my memory of base that one as a kid. So it's it's this is one of the quirkier cards out there. Um, what action in the real TCG, Charizard requires two value of energy to be discarded, not two energies, uh, not two physical cards. And the quirk of it is because its power says that double colorless energy counters well any energy counts as fire while on charizard um you can have double colorless energy which is very very good in certain situations and sometimes uh but if you have two of them then you will have to discard both of them so oh my days um so you can be set back to square one here like i have been several times so far against ronald he's not being nice today yeah, sometimes Ronald just decides that you don't get to win the game. And love having a big reset point for the last battle of the run. Isn't it the best? <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have any way of just setting up to plus six and sweeping in this game. Sadly not. Oh. And Articuno coming out, so at least we know that that's never going to attack us, because it needs water energy, and Ronald doesn't have that. I, I really Ooh. like the idea of what they did with Ronald by giving him all of the legendary birds. It's a really cool concept, because the game is all about trying to get the four legendary bird cards because Dragonite is, of course, a bird. It has wings. If it has wings, it's a bird, right? Right. <laughs> the, 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 the funny thing is that not only does he have all of the legendary cars, he has multiple copies of them, which the only way to actually get that legitimately is, I believe, if you need to beat all of the, beat the dome, I think, a total of five times? Correct. So, in the span it took us from getting to the dome and challenging the all four members, Ronald went ahead and beat them five times. Which, if we want to crown a real speedrun champion, that's it, I mean, it's Ronald right there. Yeah. 
To be fair, we don't know if he did it legitimately. He could have dual escaped his way through the four uh, through the uh, through the four members, and frankly, that would explain why he got there. That's true. Yeah, and we've got Charizard strats on display, and of course, Charizard for any of the old heads in the chat was the the card to have in base set one. Everybody wanted it. I still have a distinct memory of middle school me being really excited to be able to trade for one in a Burger King when they had Pokemon toys. Not the best card, but it's Charizard. It's also tied for the second high or for the highest HP in the game in base set one, tied with Chansey. And just so you know, everybody loves being able to swing for a hundred, even if you need a lot of energy to make it viable. Please. Please, I just double colorless energy. That's all I want. I might actually die to Eevees. This is... I... Oh no. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still on Jack. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> this is 12 minutes. Oh my days. All right. All right. Pray for me. Oh, there Pray we go. There we go. I'm going to I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to wait a few seconds for the delay. And you're going to find out whether or not I've drawn 8 cards or 1. Yeah, Gambler is a coin flip if you get heads. It's eight cards, tails, you get one. Uh, there is a trick where if you you want to hold down the B button when you're flipping the coin, because soft resetting the game is A, B, start selecting this. If you let go of all the buttons when the coin is flipping and reset, it will reset after it was decided. However, if you see that you flip the tails and you're already, you're holding down B, hit the A start and select with that and you can actually go back to before you played the gambler so you can save scum your way out of that. Rog, I gotta tell you that those last couple of turns were incredibly stressful just watching. <laughs> yeah, get your <laughs> GG's in chat for Rog. Rog really had to work for this one as Ronald did not want to give up that championship. It, the, the four Eevees that constantly flipped heads to do 30 damage, they really... It was death by many stings to the Charizard, but thankfully it had so much HP that the Eevees couldn't get through it. And that is time. <laughs> I don't want to look at my time. <laughs> Meanwhile, it looks like Pinecone is on to the Rod fight here. The true legendary dragon in the ready on the bench with Magikarp coming to the bench. And we love to see Magikarp if we have a gust of wind because then we just pull it in, it has 30 HP, and we knock it out. Uh, Rod also, we see, has a Charmander, but Rod might have given Ronald some deck building tr tips because Rod only has water energy and double colorless. And knocking out Pinecone's Diglett, but we had another Diglett ready on the bench with oh. three energy, just waiting to become a Doug Trio. There we go. Magikarp down. We just need two more prizes. Another Magikarp. The Flipping issue is coin. that Dragonair that's evolving. Um, I have to see if I can prevent it by finding another energy removal or an item finder, and I can't. But um, the least now, at least I have Doug Trio so that I can two hit the the dragon and hope for a good coin flip lock. Yeah, is Dragonair is it thirty times number of heads? I think uh, it's thirty two, times two. two, two yeah. But if uh, the AI is not very smart, and it will use Hyper Beam if it is able, which only does 20 damage. It does cost me an energy card, but I've already played an extra. So thanks to the AI's uh, limitless competence, we'll say, um, we are able to hopefully make it through Rod. It will at least not be a 20 minute Rod. Yeah, the oh. AI in this game makes Gen 1 Pokemon AI look good. <laughs> there right. are times when it's clever, but those are very rare. I think it's only clever on accident. Yes. Like, broken <laughs> clock theorem all day on this one. Yeah, exactly. Um, and fun and... fact is, especially with, uh, was it, uh, Ronald fights in the early game, the ones where we're meant to lose, if you don't do Magnemite strats and he uh, can KO your Pokemon, turns out he will showboat as much as he possibly can. He will do play literally every card in his hand. He will take his sweet time going through Professor Oaks, 
coin flip pokeballs, all sorts of nonsense, and then kill you. He's really, frankly, quite toxic. Yeah, you know, I don't know who appointed any of these club masters, any of these grandmasters in the game, but none of them are that great at the card game. The difference is, and we, uh, it'd be remiss not to mention, um, the, uh, sequel in this, uh, series. There is a sequel, um, in Trading Card Game 2, released only ever in Japan, and that game, the, uh, the, the AI woke up, and it shows violence. Um, it shows big violence. One thing you don't see a lot of the time in, um, in TCG 1, is energy removal on the opposing side. Um, in TCG2, there are multiple fights where they will have four orbs of energy removal and sometimes four orbs super energy removal, which we probably haven't seen today because it's a rare card for multiple reasons. But um, super energy removal um, removes two energy at the cost of one of your own. This makes TCG2 fights very silly sometimes. Silly is putting it nicely. It is it is an extremely frustrating game to speedrun. Like if you think this is bad, um, but uh, we're doing what we can. It does look like, um, knock on wood, I should be able to get through this Ronald in less than twelve minutes. One thing um, I want to call out that I thought was fun. Also, Ronald had a Kangaskhan in the lead. Played the legendary Zapdos that he can't attack with, and it KO'd the Kangaskhan so that Pinecone did not have to. So, even Ronald trying to help Pinecone out here. A rare occasion where occasionally the game doesn't hate you, so that you'll keep playing it and it can hate you more. Yeah. Oh my god. No, I have a way around this, but this sucks. Um, I have to burn a super potion, I think, and then I can survive oh, no. 60 damage. Oh my dang. And then I can do 10, 70, and then I'll do 10 with the Diglett, and then I think I won't lose. Oh no! So one thing that's fun one thing that's funny about the AI is it does. I swear it sometimes knows whether or not it's getting a heads. Um, I think it does um, because there's sometimes where Evie, um, where it can KO Diglett, it has the potential to kill uh, to KO Diglett at any point in the run uh, if it has two energy. But it's very seldom that you actually see an EV with two energy against D Diglett, unless it's going to KO you. Oh, Ronald has downgraded the Dragonair to the Legendary Bird Dragonite. There we oh, go. Uh -huh. Ew. Phew. No, it wasn't a downgrade, though, because uh, as soon as uh, Doug Trio's dead, I can't do anything anymore, because I only have one. Um, but I was able oh, to... Oh, right, because no. it gets the resistance to you. <laughs> Oh, hold on. I can. I still have one thing I can try. Oh, sincerest apologies to the event organizers for how my run is going. Oh my god. Oh, this, oh. Ronald this is, is just the absolute worst. This is a run of all time, I must say. The greatest dome ever played. <laughs> oh. This is the most Ronald thing ever. Please get I've... tails again. Please, please. Come on. We need your pages oh. in chat. No. <laughs> Is there Hail? something? I think I gotta... Oh. Alright, well... Let's go again! <laughs> oh my days... I kinda go... I guess, give an anecdote of just how, how unfair sometimes the RNG can be. There was... During one of my practices... Uh, earlier this week, I was going up against Rick, the science club leader. And he had an app... Yes, traitor! We got a traitor! Oh no. Okay, well, never mind. Yeah, there was you are a few seconds ahead of us, just so you know, Pank. Okay. Oh. Well, it didn't. It turned out not to work. So there's oh. a fun <laughs> AI quirk with Ronald where they might trade away their only other basic Pokemon the turn before they'll die, and it can be a two-turn win. This is super rare in the best luck, and I thought I had it for a split second, but unfortunately, he had a second legendary bird because this game is really, uh, really giving it to me today. Uh, so Franksy in chat saying to showcase dual escape, Franksy. Shout out for up. being the fastest Squirtle runner. Oh, um... Honestly, if, if we go to like 120, I will do it. Like at this point, like we got a marathon to play at that point, but... Showcase okay, dual escape. I, I think I can set it up. Um, hang on. I can set it up. 
I only I only just tried Dual Escape for the first time before we went live, and oh, I don't and yeah, I don't, don't feel one hundred percent confident in showcasing it. It's not too difficult, and you can do this at home, everybody. Um, you too can speedrun like we do, um, or rather cheat like we do. Um, so let me. Uh, I'll see if it, I can get it working, because unfortunately on Gambat I. Uh, I um I uh, make the uh, game crash of all things. It's uh, quite maybe, special. Maybe somebody could do an Imakuni or something. That would be fun. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I I certainly don't mind uh, trying it out. I, I can do it, but I just need to set up something first. Um, see right. if you can finish off <laughs> Ronald before then. I'm not saying not anything about, about my odds until it happens. I did that before, and now we've been here for five more minutes. But I th there we go. All right, I have yeah. KO'd Ronald. You're done? Okay. Then yeah, never mind. I can play from the end. Yeah, get mind. your GGs in chat for Pinecone. Finally overcoming TCG, just trying to say that she doesn't get to get through here. This is legitimately my worst completed time in, like, two years. <laughs> <I'm> like... <laughs> I... I am so sorry. This is that has been the marathoniest marathon run that ever did marathon. I have never seen a worse dome than that. <laughs> it's like the game saw that the clearly you haven't seen some of my practices on the leaderboard was going against some runners who aren't aren't in the world record contention mm. and said, "No, don't bully them." I I had sub hour potential going in, and now I have I'm clocking it at a. Oh, Adjusted time of 126. So, Whew. hey, you did it. <laughs> I think 126 oh my was God. my first PB. All right. Well, <laughs> my God, that was that was a run of all time. That was <laughs> certainly a run that of was, all time, my lord. <laughs> that was unreal. <laughs> I. You know, going into when you guys said you were going into Dome, I was like, okay, I've had a pretty bad run here. And then realizing that Pinecone, you spent so long on Steve that I actually caught up to you on Steve and passed you on Steve. That just shows you how RNG heavy this game is. <laughs> yeah, I will say like I shouldn't. There was a, a few times I made bad decisions um, because I kind of was desperate to not lose the race. Um, what I the the smart thing to do would have been for me to reset every battle until I had a Doug Trio in my hand even if it takes like 90 seconds, two minutes of resetting. And there are a few times where I'm like, oh, I got a Pokeball, I'll figure it out. Or like, oh, you know, I've got three bill, maybe I'll draw it. And I could have kept trying. Um, so some of my reset discipline went out the window with the stress. Um, so some of it's on me, but also a lot of it's on this cursed game. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I've, I've had instances where the AI par par paralyzed me five straight turns in a row, which, if you don't know, if you haven't done the math yet, that's a 3.125% chance of happening. I can beat you in this run alone on, I think it was Joshua. He, oh, no, 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 it was Sarah. That was it. Sarah, of all people, had a Squirtle that paralyzed me six times in a row. Oh, and I just, that was, I think that's the slowest Sarah ever recorded. Yeah, and Honestly. Sarah is the easiest fight in the game. Oh, by miles. <laughs> by miles, so that's that's amazing. I look forward to watching this back and seeing all the things that I missed because trying to keep up with three completely different routes yep. is yeah. a time. Also, I, I just want to assure anyone watching, this game is fun. <laughs> we swear. <laughs> it is. It is. We hate this game, but we also love it. The, the main reason I run it, I mean, as much as I love just running it, it just is fun. Some days it won't be fun, but most days it will. And most of all, it's the soundtrack that keeps me coming back. The soundtrack throughout the game, you may have heard it through um, the feed, but it is one of the best soundtracks of a... Well, I mean, it's, it's certainly up there. I just love all the beats and all the fight music's great. Yeah, definitely yeah. some of the best music, especially for a Game Boy game, but really of like any any Nintendo game, in my opinion, the most underappreciated music in any Nintendo series, I'll, I'll say. And as a reminder, um, this if you have if you own a Switch and the basic online pass, this is actually on your uh, Game Boy emulator on there. So you just go to the Virtual Console, you boot this up, and 
you could be speedrunning speed running like us. Um, and yeah, we have recently allowed it on the boards. You, there's one small detail you have to do, but you can speedrun like us on your Switch now, which can be more comfortable for some people. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure we got to wrap this up pretty quick. Uh, the one other yeah. thing I'll say to promote the speedrun is to, if you're interested at all, to check out the Pokemon TCG speedrunning Discord. Um, it's certainly gotten a lot more active in the last month with the Switch release. Uh, you can find a link to that Discord on speedrun.com. We're all happy to talk about the game, help you walk through your first few runs, and generally get you up and running. Absolutely. And I would just like to shout out uh, the tech crew. Thanks for setting this up. Especially, as I see on stream, is the little sprites next to our names to make sure everyone was aware who was, uh, who was using which uh, deck. And um, also thanks to Autumn for doing their best <laughs> commentating three runs at once. Yeah, thank you guys for having me here. This has been a blast, and I'm glad that the three-way race has been talked about for a long time, and I'm really glad that we had a chance to show it. So thank you to the uh, PSR TV community for letting us on here, for everyone for viewing. And we'll go ahead and, I suppose, if no one has anything left, we will let the marathon have its channel back so that we can get some more Pokemon going. Yeah, and mm -hmm. thanks, thank, thank you to everyone. And obviously, I'm the least experienced out of the three runners, but I do appreciate Rog and Pinecone for giving me the opportunity to race with you guys. It was an absolute pleasure. It was so much fun. And Autumn, you did amazing on the commentary and the tech crew. Uh, outstanding work as always, even up to the very last second. So I just want to thank you guys for everything. And hopefully you get your sub-hour run soon. Um, when we say sub hour, we have an extra eight minutes of tutorial time added. So Toro Knight's run, while it's literally sub hour, it's actually um, a 107. So, yeah, one day Toro, one day. Toro certainly got closer to their PB in this run than I did. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 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 That's true. <laughs> All right, but yeah, uh, echoing the comments of my fellow runners, uh, thanks to all of the organizers for putting together this great marathon and letting us uh, participate. Again, my apologies again for uh, going a smidge overestimate here. Um, and uh, yeah, um, enjoy the rest of the marathon.